we're going to start with problem one of the second section of the exam. So the first problem has three components. We have A, B, C. So we'll go ahead and start off with A. A says use the limit definition of the derivative to find f prime of x if f of x is equal to x plus 3 divided by x. Alright, so we need to find f prime of x using the limit definition of the derivative. Okay, so what that means is that f prime of x is also the same thing as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay? So here we have f of x. f of x is already given. We need to find, a, we need to find f of x plus h. So how do we find f of x plus h? Well, we then go ahead and plug in, instead of x here, we plug in x plus h. Okay? So let's go ahead and compute this. f of x plus h, that's going to be x plus h plus 3 divided by x plus h. So x of h plus 3 divided by x plus h. All right, perfect. Minus f of x. So that's just x plus 3 divided by x. Divi all this divided by h. So it's all that divided by h. All right, now I want to combine these two fractions. The only way I can combine these two fractions is if I find the LCD here. So the LCD is multiplying this one by x plus h, and multiplying this one by x plus h, and then multiplying this one by x and x. Okay? So now we get, go ahead and distribute this. We get x squared. Let's put the equal sign over here. So we get x squared plus xh plus 3x minus, got to go ahead and follow this, x squared, so that's minus x squared, that's minus xh, that's minus 3x, and that is minus 3h. Okay, so we have all that divided by the LCD, which is x, x plus h, all this divided by h. Okay? Let's go ahead and do some cancellation here. We can cancel all the x squares. We can go ahead and cancel out the xh. And we can go ahead and cancel out the 3x. So what we're left with is f prime x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of what's left over. It's minus 3h divided by x, x plus h. This is h over 1, so multiply by the reciprocal, we get 1 over h. The h will go ahead and cancel out. We're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of minus 3 divided by x, x plus h. Now we can go ahead and plug into 0 for the h, and we obtain that minus 3x. x plus 0 is x, so x times x is just x squared. So According to the limit definition of derivative, our derivative is minus 3 divided by x squared. Now let's go ahead and prove that using differ differentiation rules. All right, so this is part A. Now we have part B, okay? So part B. We have, let me just figure out what we have. We have f of x equals x plus, eight, uh, x plus 3 over x. So... We already know that we can take the derivative of this guy because it's a fraction divided by, sorry, this is a function divided by another function, so we can use the quotient rule, okay? You can also use the product rule if you move this x to the numerator and make this x to the negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and use the quotient rule. All right, so for the quotient rule, that's f prime of x, the quotient rule says take the derivative of the top and multiply it just by the bottom, so the derivative of the top is 1 times x minus take the root of the bottom, which is 1, times the top, and divide that by the bottom squared. Okay? So now we have, okay, so we have x minus x, that's going to cancel out, minus 3. So we're just left with minus 3 divided by x squared. And guess what? This is the exact same thing as this. So what do we do there? We prove that by using the differentiation rules, the differentiation rules, that this is the same as that when we did the limit definition. So, and e so you can do either or, and you're still going to get the same thing. Obviously, this is the longer way, but this is the original way that that's how they started off with derivatives. Now, once you know the tricks and the rules, you can go ahead and simplify this whole entire process into just two steps. Okay. So now let's do part C. All right. So C. What does C say? 
write the equation of the tangent line to f of x at x equals 3. All right, we know that m is equal to f prime of x. And we want to find the equation of the tangent line. Let's go ahead and let's see. So this is part b. This is part a. So we don't get confused here. OK, so part c. So we know that the equation of the tangent line will look something like this, mx plus b. It's going to be linear. It's an equation of the tangent line. OK, so in order to find m here, we just have to compute f prime at the given x value, 3. So we can do that easily. Once we have that, we'll have x. With the x, we can find y, and we'll have a point. We'll have x comma y, and we'll have the slope, m. So we have a point and a slope. We can use the point-slope formula. So we go ahead and use the point-slope formula to find this equation. So the point-slope formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right, so let's go ahead and find the slope. So m is equal to f prime at 3. So that's at x equals 3. So we come here. Plug in 3 here, 3 squared is 9, it's minus 3 over 9, and that's minus 1 thirds. So we already got the slope. We have the slope, we have x, all we need is y. So let's find f of 3. So, so we know y is equal to f of 3, which is 3 plus 3 over 3, that's 6 over 3, and that's 2. So now we have y equals 2, and we have x equals 3. Well, let's go ahead and apply it to the point slope formula. So we get y minus y1, that's 2, equals negative one third x minus a 3. Okay? So let's go ahead and distribute this out. We have y minus 2 equals negative one third x, negative, negative, positive, positive 1, because the 3 is going to cancel out. Move the 2 to the other side, and we get minus one third x. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that is the equation of the tangent line at x equals 3. Okay. So to recap, we went ahead and did part A using the limit definition to derive f prime x, the derivative. We, then we, we went ahead and then checked our answer by using the differentiation rules. After that, we wanted to find the tangent line at x equals 3. So we went ahead and had f prime to find our m. After that, we already had x, we plugged x into the original equation, or the function, and we obtained our y. Now we have a point, we have x and y, and we have m, so we can go ahead and use the point slope formula to get a line like this. So we went ahead and did that, and we got that, and that's your answer.